Great to see you all here on um, what I think is the first Friday of January, correct? It's like we got the weather is winter. We, we just skipped fall and went right to winter. So um, hopefully some of you are thinking about coming out and supporting our Wildcats tonight for our soccer game. It's going to be 20 below, but uh, we've got a big game against Barrington tonight as well as a football game tomorrow and volleyball next Monday. We have swimming and diving, so we're wrapping up our fall sports season. Um, but we are here today to celebrate some incredible students, our Libertyville High School Students of the Month, although I guess I probably should introduce myself, right? I'm Tom Kalenis. I'm the uh, very proud principal of this high school. And this is my uh, favorite day of the month because um, this is where we as a high school really um, take time to celebrate students who make us better and make us a great high school by virtue of just showing up every day and being an all around great, amazing kid. And it's really important that we do that because in our school we celebrate academics. Of course we celebrate academics. And we celebrate athletic excellence. And we celebrate artistic excellence. But we all know as adults that the most important thing probably that we would ever ask of our children is to go out into the world and just be kind and make people feel special and just be a, known as a good person. And that's what our Student of the Month Awards are. This is about students who are just like the total perfect wildcat. Some of them are getting academic awards, and I see dad laughing back there at the word, you know, the perfect wildcat, but they're the perfect wildcat, you know? They're, some of them have really high academics. Some of them are outstanding athletes. Some of them are outstanding artists. Some of them are a mix of all. But others don't necessarily um, score off the charts in any one of those areas, but when you put them all together, you know, I used to teach psychology. We talk about the gestalt, right? The whole is greater than the sum of the parts. And when you put these students together, the whole, right, we got psychology here, the whole that they demonstrate to us is really extraordinary. And I always go home from this awards and I tell my own kids, I say, if there's one award that you could win in, in, in school or earn, really, in school that I would want you to get, it would be an award like this, our, our student of the month, because your student did not apply for this award. They did not fill out an application. They did not say, hey, pick me. They just went about their day doing what every other high school does. And some members of our staff just said, you know what? When I think about a student who really exemplifies what it means to be a wildcat, I think about your child. So we are truly proud of them. And you're going to hear our staff come up today and talk all about your son or daughter and tell you why we're proud of them. But before we do that, I'm gonna put the mom and dad and maybe grandparents and maybe friends on the spot, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a minute or two at your table and I would like the parents or the guests of the student to share why they're proud of their students, okay? LHS staff members, if you're coming up here to talk, you'll get to share when you come up here, but if you're just here to support a student and you're not gonna come up to the mic, you can participate with mom and dad and other invited guests. Okay, so let's take a minute or two. For students, this day is all about massive awkwardness for you. People are just gonna be telling you how awesome you are all day, and we're gonna start that right now, okay?
okay if you could sort of wrap up there what you're saying and to wrap up what we're talking about all right <laughs> if i could have your attention back up here come back this way this is always a really good thing when i tell the parents and grandparents and friends to start talking about the student, you don't want to stop. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we are gonna bring up, um, we're gonna, we're gonna, for the students, the awkwardness continues because we are gonna bring up a staff member who nominated you and you get to come up with that staff member Okay, and the staff member is gonna talk here at the microphone and you get to stand right here while they talk about you and look out at your adoring fans, okay? And then afterwards, um, after they're done speaking about you, I'll come over, I get to shake your hand and I get to give you a backpack and inside the backpack is your certificate and we're really fortunate because all great public high schools come and need a great community around them. And parents, you're part of that. Family, you're part of that. But also our businesses in our community really support our high school. And part of being a student of the month at Libertyville High School is we have Mr. Jack Greasy right here. And Jack owns the Libertyville's Domino's Pizza. And every single month, Domino's Pizza puts a, is it a free pizza? And then you don't get the pizza in the backpack, but you get a coupon. <laughs> You get a coupon for a free pizza, and that is completely courtesy of Mr. Greasy. So thank you very much. And he has been doing this for several years, so it just shows how our community really supports you guys as students as well. So thank you. All right, and so to get us started today, I'm gonna bring up the ever so awesome Miss Nasland, and she is gonna talk about, is Miss uh, Shane Beck coming up too? Oh with the doubly awesome Ms. Shane Beck, and they're gonna talk about Tyler Kukla. This is Tyler. We told him we were gonna like carry him up here, and he was like, can you just, can you just let me walk and be normal? We thought we would up the awkwardness, if possible. Um, this is Tyler Kukla, and he is a student in our Team Taught American Literature class. Um, he's one of the first students that we thought of as soon as we saw that there was a student of the month for juniors We thought oh Tyler obviously he brings a positivity an energy a, uh, a Sense of humor gymnastics moves. He does those sometimes in class um, He brings those and he he is he gives an energy to the classroom that is contagious students all they enjoy having Tyler in class because he brings such a fresh perspective on things we're reading. He asks really provocative questions. Um, he's someone who sometimes has reactions to the things we're reading. And so it's really awesome to have him in class. And he, um, Mrs. Shanebeck will tell you a little bit um, about uh, something he did that sort of went above and beyond what we expect from most students. We want students to be engaged. We want them to do their homework. We want them to you know, be good citizens. And he's all of those things. But he sets the bar even higher for himself. And he wrote a very personal story um, about a member of his family. And um, when he got the paper back, there was a, a bit of an interesting spin um, on that. And so I'll let Mr. Shane back talk about that. But I love having Tyler in my class. I've, I've taught for 25 years now, which is crazy. But um, he's one of my favorite kids. And so I would like if my own son was a student like Tyler. So I'll let Mr. Shane back talk about that. And I have a little bit of an interesting perspective on Tyler because I also had him um, as a freshman in my class. And so I've seen him grow um, over the past three years. And something of, that I've grown to love about Tyler is he was a great student freshman year, but he has really developed into a leader this year in our class. And he is someone that um, his presence is felt in the class, but his absence is also felt. When Tyler is not in class, it's not the same. Um, and that energy is not the same. And what Ms. Aslan was talking about 
Um, we recently um, wrote a narrative in which Tyler wrote about a member of his family, um, and he received an A on that paper. He worked really, really hard every single day. He was coming, working hard on that paper to craft a really, really meaningful, um, moving um, story, um, very personal to him. And he got an A on it. Um, and But that's not why he's standing here. He's standing here because he came up to me and he said, um, we offered a rewrite to anyone who wanted to rewrite their paper to improve. Um, and we didn't expect to hear from Tyler because he got the A. He got that one of the highest grades in the class. But he came to us wanting to not just get a higher grade. It wasn't about the grade to Tyler. It was about um, improving himself as a writer in our class because that was meaningful to him. Um, so that kind of enthusiasm and that kind of engagement in our class um, is why I, I just love having him in our class so dearly. And I just, I, I just, it wouldn't be the same without him. So um, that's, that's kind of the example that put him above the rest of his peers in our eyes. So thank you, Tyler, for being such an awesome, awesome student. Tyler, you're, um, you're really fortunate because um, one of the things your teacher said was that when you're not there, people are sad and they notice your absence. And when I don't show up somewhere, people are, they notice my absence, but they're quite happy. So <laughs> this is good. You, you, you've got it going on. Nice work. All right. So our next person that we are going to bring up is the incredible Miss Nicholson, who is going to talk about Grace Albright. Okay, so this is Grace Albright. She's in my honors chemistry class this year. And when I started thinking about who I wanted to nominate for student of the month, um, Grace stood out pretty quickly, as I'm sure a lot of the teachers in this room are going to say that, that the student that is here stood out for some really important reason. And in chemistry and in science in general, a lot of times what we're doing is we are asking kids to get with a group of their, of their peers and come up with an idea that they have posed by some sort of challenge. So we challenge them with an experiment or with a problem and we ask them to come up with an idea of like, how could you solve this? How could you go about this? And sometimes what we see is that the first person to talk says, let's do that. And everybody else goes, yeah, let's do that, right? And they all rally behind that first idea. Whether it's the best idea or not the best idea, a lot of times we get kind of this like group think going and the kids just roll with it. Um, one of the things that I love about Grace as a student is that she has a sense of confidence in her that that's not good enough for her. So if she's in a group with kids and, and everybody says, yeah, let's just go in that route, if Grace has an idea that she thinks is better or that she thinks might take them in a different direction, she's not afraid to say, you know what, let's stop and think about this. Let's really consider what our options are before we just jump into the lab and start mixing things together or starting trying to create something. Um, and that's a really important skill to have, especially as a high school student, to have the confidence to stand up to your peers in a way that is thoughtful and respectful and say, I've got another idea and I think it's equally good. Um, so I really, um, I really am inspired by that. And your peers recognize that too. So the kids in the class really feed off of that. And they see that and that builds confidence in them to say, maybe I have an idea that's worthy, right? Like maybe I don't have to just listen to the people around me, but I can really try those ideas out on my own. Um, the other thing that I really love about Grace, so I just found out, I had Grace's older sister, Sam, um, two years ago, and I just found out that Grace actually has two older siblings above Sam, too. So she's the youngest of four, she's the baby. Um, I'm also the baby in my family, so I know what that feels like, that it's wonderful to have people to look up to, um, but it's also sometimes daunting, because you have that to live up to as well. And so when Grace came through LHS, uh, if anyone in here has older siblings, you know that when you get to high school, people know your name, right? So people know you based off of who are your older siblings and what have they done. Um, and I had Sam, and I, Sam was a wonderful student, and I had a lot of fun with her older sister. And I can tell that Grace has a really good relationship with her older sister. She talks about her all the time, what she's doing at college, of how excited she is. And one thing I want 
grace to know is that you are your own person too and you have a uniqueness to you and you are making um, your own footprints at LHS. So I don't want you to feel that you are living up to your sister. You're creating uh, your own waves here and that's very visible. And the last thing that I want to share about Grace is kind of a fun thing. So uh, Dr. Clint has talked about the fact that she did not apply for this, right? Like I got to choose who I wanted and Grace came to mind first. And Grace did the same thing for me. So at the volleyball game a few months ago, or maybe weeks ago, maybe not months, um, they have a teacher, a teacher appreciation night and they get to pick whichever teacher they want to come and Grace selected me. And I thought that that was really cool that she picked me. And the coolest part is when I got there, she had made me a card and she had made, um, <laughs> She had made molecules out of volleyballs on her card. And I was like, God, why didn't I think of that as like an activity in class, right? Yeah. So I've got that card on my bulletin board, and next year when we do that activity, like I'm going to ask kids to pick something in their life to make those molecules out of. Um, so you've changed my teaching. So Grace Albright, really cool kid. <laughs> I did not get an invitation to the volleyball game, so um, apparently I need to start doing something a little different here. All right, so moving right along here, and um, don't worry if you're if you're concerned that you know I'm I'm moving in alphabetical order, and you think, well, I'm next up. You're wrong, because I just jump all over the place. I like to keep you on your toes. So we're going to bring up Miss Elmore from our math department, the awesome Miss Elmore, to talk about Molly Grayton. Molly is in my computer, one of my computer sciences classes for the third year in a row, which I think is deserving of an award right there. <laughs> so I've had her uh, freshman, sophomore, and now junior year in a uh, computer science class. And she's a model student. She's a dedicated student. Um, I have so many awesome, I, I always brag to my other teacher friends at other schools that I have the best students ever. I really do. And so for me to have chosen Molly out of all my awesome students is really says something. Um, but the reason I chose Molly is not because of what she does in my class, which is awesome, but the things she does in addition to what she does in my class. So Molly's always looking for opportunities to learn more about computer science, and she often goes to weekend events. Um, they're called hackathons, but lest you think it's something illegal or anything like that, it's not. So a hackathon, the use of the word hacking in computers um, sometimes can be a bad thing, but in this case, they're good things. And what it is is a bunch of kids get together and they try to build something in a 24-hour period and they learn from each other and there's often um, guest speakers and lessons and things like that. And so Molly has been, has been doing quite a few of those. Um, she's gone to some events at colleges, uh, things like that. So she's always looking for ways to improve her skills beyond the classroom, which is awesome. Uh, another thing is that um, there aren't a lot of girls in computer science. Uh, she's very outnumbered, and that does not stop her. And in fact, um, she even ex has experienced, like at a hackathon, where she wasn't taken as seriously as some of the boys because she's a girl. And that doesn't stop her from keeping on going back. Um, but she recognizes this disparity, and she's doing something about it. So last year, when she was a sophomore, she approached me about starting a new club for women in STEM. And so yesterday we had our first meeting of the Curie Cats and uh, Molly is the co-founder and she's been instrumental in getting that off the ground. And so she's, a, you know, has always been a great student and a role model in class, but now she's, you know, kind of broadening that and she's an excellent role model for the other young women. And I expect great things from Molly in the future. Molly, as a father of two young daughters, I thank you for your advocacy and for blazing a trail so that, you know, my girls know that um, they can do whatever it is that they set their hearts and minds to. So thank you very much. All right, our next person that we're going to bring up is the incredible Mr. Mork, who's going to talk about Daniel Morrissey.
Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, this is Danny Morrissey here, and Danny is a young man I've known for a couple years because he was a player in our basketball program, but uh, never having coached him directly, I, I didn't really know him that well. Uh, what stood out about Danny, though, was how the coaches who did coach him always talk about his work ethic, um, being a, how great of a teammate he was, his attitude every day. Um, and now this year when I have him in, in junior, senior PE, I, I see exactly what they're talking about. You know, Danny, this smile that he has all the time, Every day he walks into class with a smile on his face, and he gives 100% every day. You know, he really is an ideal dream student for our physical education program. You know, it's the other things, though, too, that stand out. If something needs to happen, stuff needs to be put away, picked up, you know, it's Danny, it's that type of kid that you're looking for in a teacher who's right there to help you out, never have to ask twice. Um, so he is a great young man, a great student, very deserving of this award, uh, but the only negative thing about Danny is he tried to play me in pickleball a couple weeks ago, and got destroyed, <laughs> all right? So, but he is a fantastic young man, so Danny Morrissey. Danny, I was pickleball champion of my PE class, Maine West High School, 1991. So we want to take on Mr. Mork. We'll we'll take him on. All right, doubles. Nice. All right. We're gonna bring up the extraordinary Miss Rubin to talk about my golf partner, Grace Boileau. start, I have a small confession. Um, for those of you who know me, you know that um, my motor runs normally about right here. So after the venti coffee I just had, I am totally off the charts. <laughs> uh, so please bear with me, um, unless I am going to speak for the next 30 minutes and not have it make any sense at all, I'm just going to read what I wrote about Grace. This is the third year that I've had the pleasure of teaching Grace, and I'm so excited to have this opportunity to honor her for her unrelenting hard work, dedication, and effort in Latin. Grace is really an exceptional student in so many ways. She's diligent, she's responsible, she's eager to learn, and that's whether we're discussing the emperors of Rome or completing arduous translations about lions and slaves in the Colosseum or learning yet another use of the subjunctive. Uh, in fact, Grace almost never comes to class without her homework or unprepared for a test or quiz, even when her participation on the golf team or her job at Chick-fil-A keep her busy quite late. She is tenacious and goal-oriented and driven to succeed, willing to do whatever it takes to accomplish her goals. And Grace's dedication and enthusiasm extend beyond the Latin classroom. She's a devoted member of LHS's Latin Club, this year being elected junior consul, which is like a president. Um, but I'm not honoring Grace with this award simply because she's a great student who rocks in Latin. It's also because she's honest, respectful, patient, kind, and compassionate. Grace is always there when somebody in class needs help or to copy her notes. She's ready to listen and support her friends and classmates when they're having a bad day. And she has dedicated her free time to tutoring other students in Latin. Wow. And you can always count on her for a smile, a kind word, and an encouraging attitude. So it is really my pleasure to honor her with this award. Thanks, Grace. <laughs> So yes, Grace is a member of our golf team, and I got to play golf with her earlier this year. And if we were speaking Latin, I would know the word for water, sand, and out of bounds. So um, we'll, have to, we'll have to practice those for my golf game next time. 
All right. Moving right along, uh, we are going to bring up Mr. Tamayo to talk about Catherine Hay. Um, I'd like to first start out by saying it's really nice to see so many volleyball players out here. It's really awesome. And it's not really a surprise to me either because like, I've worked with so many of them and you guys, like, I see you day in, day out. You guys are always putting in the effort, so it's good to see. Um, about Katie, so I started coaching Katie as a freshman, uh, what was it, four years, or three years ago? And I remember that she would come into practice and she had this like goofy footwork. So she would go, you're supposed to go like right, left, right, left. And she did left, right, left, right, and she's a righty, so it's backwards. And I looked at her and I'm like, Katie, we've got to fix this. So I made her do like 300 approaches in one practice. So it was like, it was a lot. It was a lot. And uh, here we are three years later and it's still not fixed. <laughs> but the thing is though, that her swing is so amazing. Like she hits it really hard. I don't know how she does it because her footwork's still goofy, but she gets it done. Um, but so anyways, I now have Katie in my class and uh, had to nominate a junior and she instantly came to mind. Not only because she showed me so much hard work and um, commitment to her goal is being a strong player as a freshman, but then when I think of her as a student, she's that quiet kid in class that because she puts in all this extra time for all these other things, that she's sitting there and she's just head down, getting stuff done, getting an A in class, which is like hard. There's like four kids getting an A in that class. And um, she's, I can tell she's sleep deprived, but she puts in the time. She does everything that she has to do to make sure that she is like doing her best on the volleyball court, getting an A in class, and then she goes and helps her, her fellow classmates. And just hearing her family talk about her and like the things that they had to say about her, it just reinforced everything that I already knew and believe about you. And, uh, and that is that you are just a great soul and then you deserve recognition for being who you are and being a great wildcat. So. so I had to ask, I said, Dr. Collins, can I please go up there and add something really quick about Katie? So, oh my gosh, don't do that. Sorry, sorry, okay. So, so um, Mr. Tamayo beat me to the punch with student of the month. Um, he, uh, when I saw that she was selected, I was so excited, but let me share with you why. Um, so um, my name is Jennifer Ulix and I oversee the activities here. And one of the big things that we do here that you might be familiar with is the WISH project. And each third hour class um, chooses a family to help at the holiday season. And Katie came to me, and I've known Katie for a couple of years, she came to me one morning and she said, if you need any help, with the WISH project, I would love to help in any way that I can. And I said, are you the leader in your class? And she wasn't sure at that time if she was. Later she found out that she was gonna be helping her class. But in addition to that, she really wanted to plug into the program any way that she could. So last week, or this week, was it this week already? This week, this Wednesday, it's all blending together. Um, Katie and I worked on a presentation um, to share with a, about 175 of her peers. And she basically led the training for all of these students. And her and I worked together on the presentation. We added animations. We had a lot of laughs and a lot of fun. But she was incredibly articulate and heartfelt in delivering the message on why kindness is so important in our community. And um, I'm so proud of her and can't wait to see how your leadership develops over the next couple of years. Thank you. So you've been practicing that footwork for a number of years and still haven't got it. I don't know if that speaks to your prowess as a learner or Mr. Tamayo's skills as a coach. I'm not really <laughs> sure here. <laughs> All right. So let's bring up here our next student. We're going to bring up the one of our brand new teachers at our school this year, fresh out of high school, Mr. Kim. <laughs> with McKenna Rudolphy.
So this is Mr. Kim. <laughs> All right. Um, man, I know that this might not mean as much coming from me because of my uh, short amount of time that I've been doing this. But um, even in my short time at LHS uh, and as a teacher, um, but really even in my time as a human being, uh, McKenna Rodolphy really just stands out. Um, and I could tell you about all of her academic accolades. You know, she, uh, <laughs> she came up to me before our last test and she was like, Mr. Kim, I'm really not prepared for this, blah, blah, blah. And then I like kind of, you know, brushed it off, like, okay, whatever. And then the next day she was like, see, I told you, like, I wasn't prepared for that test. And I was like, what do you mean? I like, didn't re really remember her exact grade. Um, and we went back and looked and like, and then she got an A. But it was a surprise to both of us because she had been wrapping up hundreds on these tests and she dropped a couple points. She was like, I told you I wasn't ready for it. Um, and so, you know, I could spend this whole time talking about her, her uh, achievements in, in our classroom, um, about her involvement outside of the classroom. But really what stands out about McKenna is um, the first thing you notice about her when she walks into a room is that she doesn't ask to be a leader, uh, but that her heart draws people to her and that people follow her naturally because of that. Um, she's not the loudest person in the room. She's not the, uh, you know, the most outspoken all the time, but she's always asking questions um, that challenge herself and her, her classmates. Um, and you can see in her interactions with other people that she genuinely cares about them. Um, and for me, I think that that is one thing that alone is worth recognizing. That for me, when I thought about Student of the Month, I was like, man, who is somebody that I would nominate for a Human of the Month sort of award? Uh, and that is somebody, and McKenna is that person. Um, man, there's one other thing I wanted to say. Uh, oh, and then when you think about um, just as a human being, right, her, I think that a lot of times her uh, success in my classroom, I teach AP Psych, um, and I think, I always tell them, this is a study about like, who you are, who people around you are, why we got there. I think a lot of times her passion for that subject comes out of this deep care of human beings. She wants to understand who she is and who the people around her out of a, a deep care for humans in her heart. Um, and that's something that really stands out to me. So McKenna Rodolphe, everybody. Fantastic, we are moving right along, and congratulations, McKenna and Mr. Kim. The way you described about a leader leading with her heart is a beautiful way to describe you, McKenna, so congratulations. We are now going to jump to our next person. Um, we're going to celebrate uh, Oscar Pena, and Miss Greenswag and Mr. Mansell are going to come up to talk about the awesome Oscar Pena. Threatening to make a face like this the whole time. <laughs> You're gonna smile. Cause look at that smile. All right. Um, so Mansell and I teach um, a U.S. history class together, and first of all, it's just been such an enriching experience to get to work with someone like Mike, and he has helped me to grow and appreciate um, so many other attributes about students that I think sometimes go unnoticed. Um, or underappreciated. And so Oscar is one of those students who has stood out to us from day one. Um, and a little bit of background, right? Oscar's new to Libertyville High School. And I never would have known that from the way he is with his peers and the way that he responds to adults in the building. Um, Oscar has always come into the room kind of beaming and energetic and looking to make connections um, and help people out. And there was a moment, are you doing it? Okay, there was a moment um, where we thought that because of a schedule change that Oscar was going to be leaving our class and we really fought and this was a big crusade for Mike um, to keep Oscar in our class. We didn't want to lose him because of the joy he brings and the way that he can kind of help to get people um, focused and on board when 
it can be a really distracting situation sometimes. So we thank you for that. And, and I just wanted to add, um, you saw the smirk on Oscar's face. Um, it's really easy when we get a lot of kids to transfer in to try to pull back because as we were talking, Libertyville is a totally different environment than a lot of other schools. And Oscar hit the ground running. He was able to adjust to where he was at and uh, enrich the classes by his conversation, his peers, and, and with us. So we've made the joke already that you know he is absolutely their loss and an absolute attribute and a benefit for being here at Libertyville High School. So that's why we wanted to make him soon. Well. Yeah. Oscar's in big trouble in my office because um, the first couple weeks of school, when he was new, he would stop by my office all the time to talk to me, to talk to some of the people who work in my office, and um, two of the uh, people who work in my office kind of fell in love with Oscar, and he no longer stops by because now he's so popular, he's got all these friends, he's always out doing other things. So, you talk to me, but you better go check in with Mr. Bruler because... <laughs> All right, so our next student that we're going to discuss, we're going to jump to the bottom of our list and bring up the awesome Mrs. Gallivan to talk about Sabine Brunko. Every time they say Mrs. Gallivan, I know it's hard for everybody to know who I am because I got married in the middle of the school year last year. So I was formerly Miss Hyla and students still and faculty when they see Mrs. Gallivan are like, who the heck is that? So I am the artist formerly known as Miss Hyla. And I teach the, um, it's called Family Consumer Sciences and I mainly focus in all of the different levels of the foods classes and clothing construction. And as you know, it's such an honor to be um, nominated for student of the month, but just to show how lovely and kind and hardworking and disciplined and wonderful Sabine is. I had her last year in class, not even this year. And one of my colleagues, Kristen Tarrant, we were talking um, just before we had to nominate for student of the month and she was um, saying how wonderful Sabine, and, uh, Sabine is and I was agreeing with her. So Sabine, you know, not to copy what a lot of the other teachers have said, it, you know, in a foods class you have to work in a group. You get paired in a kitchen and Sabine, even though she is not the loudest in her group, was kind of developed as like the quiet leader. She was very hardworking. She was very helpful. She was always so kind and that, above all, as Dr. Kalenta said, is something that always really sticks out with me, not only to her own classmates, but the way that she treated me as well, asking and uh, if, if I needed help, helping clean up, um, just the, the little things and the way that she approached me and her classmates as well. And she just stood out. She was so positive every, every day, so excited about everything that we did, so energetic. Um, and it was just so refreshing to work with her and her whole group it was really lovely. I don't want to diminish that either. You had a really nice group. But this year, she's in the child development class with Mrs. Tarrant, who couldn't um, come because she's teaching right now, so I got to. But um, she wanted me to emphasize also that Sabine, now in the child development class, who has a natural gift for working with children and may decide one day to become a teacher herself, just has such a presence um, with the young kids. And her lesson was so wonderful that um, Mrs. Tarrant was so impressed and it really stuck out with her. But 
that her attention to detail also in that class is just above and beyond her classmates. So for that reason, we have our professional organization, which is called um, FCCLA, Family, Career, and Community Leaders of America, which um, competes against surrounding schools in the areas of culinary and child development and clothing construction and fashion design. And um, you know, we asked Sabine to be a part of that organization and she happily accepted and so she will be competing, which is a really wonderful honor as well. And we are really excited to see how she thrives in that. And I know that she'll continue to do great things here and I'm just really excited to get to work with her still this semester in that regard. Sabine, I hope you do consider going into teaching because from everything described about you, you would be an amazing teacher and we need great teachers for future generations. Our next student that we're gonna bring up, we're gonna bring up the very creative Mr. Thompson to talk about Nicholas Rogers. Well, because of the time I've decided to cut my little thing down to about 15 minutes. Is that okay? Everybody here? Um, uh, Nick here is a student that I think, well, the, the hard part about going this late, and thanks for putting me this late, um, is everything I'm going to say you've heard already, so I should just say ditto and walk down, but, but I don't think I'll do that because I want Nick to stand up here longer. <laughs> this is not something Nick is in his personality. He doesn't like to be the center of attention at all. This is not something that, he's a quiet, but a very thoughtful individual. Um, in, in this class, he's in my introductory engineering design class, and in this class we have quite a few younger students, I would say for lot, lots of freshmen, Nick is a junior, and I mean, I know most freshmen are very mature and, and behave themselves and don't get excited. We have a few that tend to be a little bit more antsy, would you say? And one thing I will say about Nick, the reason why I have nominated him for this, other than outside of everything everybody else has said, is how patient he is with the younger students uh, in the class. He's, um, when, when I feel myself bubbling up a little bit, I look at Nick and I'm, I'm calm. <laughs> and, and because he's just always calm and, and under control and, and is great working with the, the younger students in the class, and I would say uh, is, a, is a quiet leader. Not, a, not one that you know, vocally is telling people, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. He's a quiet, people just tend to follow him just because they know that he knows what he's, what he's doing. And that's, that's why I decided to nominate Nick for Student of the Month this month. So <laughs> Nick, thank you for that because you know you 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 help demonstrate that leadership takes all kinds of forms, and a lot of times we do we think of a leader as being somebody who's up front and needs to always be very vocal. But you demonstrate that it takes many forms in terms of a quiet and steady kind of focus and leadership that you exhibit. So thank you. All right, our next student, we're going to bring Mr. Manzel back up, and Mr. Colsey is his partner this time to talk about Greg Rinix. Mr. Mansell again. Uh, thanks for all being here and uh, congratulations to all the Student of the Month winners. It's an awesome award. Um, for those of you who have teachers here and students here, if you've never interacted with Greg, Greg is a caring, uh, personable kid with a great sense of humor, smile on his face all the time. Um, <laughs> not, yeah, there you go. Yeah. He, like, you know, Greg doesn't like to be the center of attention either. I know him and I were both nervous for this time, but, uh, and I've been here for a few years. And Greg is the first person 
you know, we, Mr. Mansell and I co-nominated Greg, but he's the first person that I've nominated for, for Student of the Month, and, and I couldn't be more proud for, for it to be Greg. Um, you know, when I see him in the hallway, he, he's in a good mood and he's got a smile on his face usually. And uh, he has, he's the type of kid, we all know those type of kids, who uh, just based on a simple interaction, he, he can brighten up your day. Um, and, he, and he's done that for me many times this year. Um, so what we've noticed with Greg throughout not just this month but the last few months is he's re really been taking an active role in his, in his academics, seeking out teachers, asking what, he, what more can he do. Um, and he's, he's given up his, his lunch period uh, multiple times with me to work with me. Um, and, and we've just seen a determination in Greg um, to succeed. And in my class, I heard the word contagious earlier used by somebody. And Greg is often chosen as a leader in my class because the other kids look up to him and they feed off uh, his energy, his, his work ethic. Um, so you love to have a kid like Greg in your class. Um, and for those reasons, Mr. Mansell and I share an office. And you know, when we got that student of the month email a couple weeks ago or whenever it was, we were both sitting there and we're like, Greg, you know, we, we, we knew. And um, we've spoken to Greg and, and we talked about uh, how he's earned this. And, and this is kind of the standard that he set for himself. And, and we're confident that he's going to, you know, live up to that standard. So there's no pressure. Um, <laughs> you know, so congratulations. You earned it. Thank you. So That's awesome, Greg. One of the things we talk about a lot is um, what makes people successful. When you look around the world at successful people, they all have something called grit, which is the ability to persevere and focus over time. And you've demonstrated that, Greg, to your teachers and to our other students. So awesome work. OK. Oh, I forgot my book. Hold on. Can't forget my book. Our next one, we're going to go to the top of the list and bring up the awesome Mr. Ness to talk about Thomas Power. All right, am I last? Nope. Oh, okay, all right, thank you. Uh, I should just have uh, Thomas play guitar for you, because he's awesome. If you haven't learned that he loves guitar and music, um, any opportunity for him to play, he jumps at it. He's in pretty much everything that we can, I listed it all there. Um, the first year that I had him, freshman year, he came to guitar club. Um, I'd asked him if he would come and play for eighth grade orientation, which was a couple hours later. I actually had to tell him to go home because he was just gonna practice. Um, and then he kept, he played through eighth grade orientation and then he went home and played. And the next day he said, I played six hours yesterday. And that's really where I, where I learned what kind of dedication and how much he loves music. What I'm more proud of, though, is actually the leader that he's become. And he now teaches the other students and is a role model for everybody. Um, and is, as far as I know right now, has decided he wants to be a music teacher. So I'm very proud of that. Thank you for being my student. photos to a whole new level this time. This is good. It's good stuff. Okay, well, last but certainly not least, we are going to have Miss Ulix come back because she is going to talk about Savannah Stevens. So I have the great honor, and one of my most favorite parts of my job is to notify the students when they get student of the month because they get a pass to come to the office and they are freaked out because they think they're in trouble. And so when you tell them you have been selected as student of the month, their whole demeanor changes, like everything just melts off. 
And then with Savannah, it was so cute because she came in and I told her, you've been selected as student of the month. She was like, what? What do you mean? What is this? I don't get it. Why? <laughs> and just kept saying, why? I don't understand. And I, I said, well, somebody out there thinks you are pretty darn special. Um, me included, but Nancy Stevens, um, her counselor, nominated her this month, and she could not be with us. But I'd like to share with you how I know Savannah. Her and I met on a ski trip last year. Was it, it was last year, right? Um, I was chaperoning with our snowcats, and Savannah um, had a little bit of an accident and really got injured. So she hit a tree, and it was it was a really bad accident. So... The whole bus of students went back to school and the other chaperone stayed with her till her parents could get her. And um, I saw her the following Monday in a wheelchair and her knee was all braced up and it was a pretty severe accident. And I was like, how are you? And she just like, her face lit up and she was smiling, she was joyous. I was like, and her attitude has been amazing since that accident. And she, she just played along with it and everything was fine. And so when Nancy said, can somebody uh, present for, for me? And I was like, oh yes, I know Savannah, I would love to present. So then I was reviewing what Nancy wrote in the booklet, which I'll, you'll all receive a copy of the nomination actually, um, for each of your students. Um, I was reading in there, I was like, okay, I'm gonna read what Nancy said and wouldn't you believe she talks about the skiing accident in here. So <laughs> I thought that was kind of ironic. So here we go. I'm just going to read what Nancy says um, in honor of Savannah. So Savannah is a sweet and kind young lady with an adventurous spirit. Last year after being diverted into a tree while skiing, Savannah sustained substantial injuries requiring surgery and extra help. Savannah never complained, was always smiling, and never skipped a beat with her academics. This year, the adventurous Savannah has more plans to venture into the wilds, but first, the doctors recommend that a plate and screws come out of her arm. While with a smile, Savannah is just taking it as it is. She truly is a resilient, compassionate young lady that the LST has always known. We are thinking of you, Savannah, and are here to help in any way. So congratulations. Now we're almost done, but students, there is one more moment of awkwardness for you because uh, in just one minute, we're going to do one big group photo, okay? And we're going to let the parent paparazzi get in front of you and take all these photos, all right? But I would just want to, before we go, just thank everybody for being here today. Students, obviously, thank you for all you do for Libertyville High School. Parents and family members and loved ones, thank you for all you do supporting these students. And one of my favorite authors, Maya Angelou, said, and students, I think this relates to you. You know, Maya Angelou said, um, it's not what you say that people remember. People will seldom remember what you say, but they will never forget how you make them feel. And you are students who, when you leave us, um, we will always remember you for how you made us feel. So.